It has been a while. Whoa, let's do this. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am so happy to be back. Today I'm breaking down the American Express Platinum card and I just wanted to share my personal experience and I just wanted to talk about today about the pros and the cons that I've experienced and just to give a little bit more uh, personalization just because I went through it all and I wanted to really give you my honest thoughts about it. Ah, uh, I've been using it for about a year and I just wanted to share my pros and cons and some things that you might not have thought of that might be valuable to the listeners out there because when I was using it at the time, I didn't really know how to go about using certain things. Some things you might know about already, just going through nerd wallets or other YouTube channels, um, but this is a little bit more personalized to me and things I didn't, didn't know and I didn't really find online. So. I just wanted to pay that forward and hopefully you get some value from this video. And if you do, please like and subscribe and I appreciate it all. First, let's talk about the pros. And the first one was the Equinox $300 membership. In the beginning of the year, I decided to get the Equinox membership and I was able to get $300 credit for uh, when I signed up in 2023. And then also I got it to be able to apply in 2024 for $300. So technically I got it for two years because they go by the calendar year and then I close to Equinox. So it was about $600 in savings of Equinox. And if you don't use Equinox, then don't really worry about it. But for me, $600 in savings of Equinox membership was definitely worth it. Uh, they raised their rates and that's why I canceled my Equinox membership. Didn't think it was that worthwhile anymore because it just got super busy and the increased rate. Something that I definitely take advantage of every month is the $15 Uber credits. Anytime you're traveling, I pretty much use Uber once a month. So the $15 is, is used. So $200 a year in Uber credit, definitely worth it for me. Something that I didn't think I was gonna use was the Saks Fifth $100 credit. I went ahead and got an Aloe tank top that was worth 50 bucks one time. And then the other time, I believe I got, they get another shirt? I don't know what I got for the other one. Let me look, let me, let me, let me look at that. What did I get? and then I spend $60 on like a Carhartt black t-shirt. It's there, uh, you might as well use it because you have it. Another pro was the Walmart Plus $155 annual subscription. It comes out to be $12.95 a month for Walmart Plus, um, and that just comes with free fish shipping. It came into use one time when we went to a bachelor party in Austin and they didn't have a Costco nearby. The reason why we don't want Walmart is they had better selection than the Costco nearby and because I had it for free delivery that we got all the stuff for the bachelor party. So I did use the Walmart Plus one time and for the $155, I don't know if it's worth it, but it did come in handy when I needed it. Something else was the $240 digital entertainment credits. It came out to be like 20 bucks a month in digital entertainment. I used it on Disney Plus, ESPN Plus, and Hulu bundle. It comes out to be 25 a month, so I end up paying $5 a month on that. So that's something you might not know, but that's how much the bundle works. I think you can just do Hulu by itself, you can do Disney by Plus, Disney Plus by itself, but the bundle, it was definitely the most worth it. And just paying five bucks, I didn't think it was that big a deal. The main thing that I really liked was the Marriott and Hilton Gold status. They estimated to be about $35 per stay. And one of the tips that I realized was you really only can get the points and the room upgrades with using your status if you book directly through Hilton and you directly book through Marriott. So let's say if I book through Expedia or book through another third party app, they won't give you a room upgrade once you get there. Some places did because they might have just overlooked it and they still wanted to honor the, the gold membership, but most of the times they did not. But you just definitely have to try and call them and see if they can add you to add their number to the list or add your number to the reservation to see if you get those points redeemed after you stay and then if they honor your room upgrade slash breakfast free continental breakfast or in the morning, but it didn't happen often. I only happened once. Only happened once when I got the room upgrade booking through a third party. So I would say I would not bank on that. Also clear membership is $189. Um, I also have TSA pre and global entry. I gave the $100 voucher to my parents for them to use um, since I already had this, had it. And with clear versus pre-check and global entry, or I guess it's mostly pre-check versus clear. 
with pre-check. I mostly did pre uh, TSA pre-check anyways. So I went through that line instead of the clear pre-check line. Um, and that's just because it, the clear line moves, tends to move a little bit slower, just going through the eye exam and everything like that. And TSA pre-check just moved a lot quicker. At least that's the LAX um, Chicago though. So I usually go back LA to O'Hare, back and forth. Um, and I noticed that was the, the main two places. Those were two of the main places that um, I traveled to and I used TSA pre-check more often than not. So then that last one was the priority pass. I thought it was worth it. So anytime you're traveling, you can always bring one guest with you. They valued it at $469. Um, I believe there's three different tiers with priority pass and the one with Amex gives you uh, a guest to go with you each time. So I thought that was really worth it. We didn't really have the Centurion Lounge access in the places I was going to. Um, and mainly there was at least one priority pass lounge available as well as Delta, but I want Delta by myself. I didn't even bring a guest in. Personally, I don't use the card unless I'm booking with a hotel or a flight. I use different cards for my everyday use. I just kind of have the Amex Platinum card just for their benefits. And uh, some people use this daily driver just if they don't want to deal with the mental strain, but I like using different credit cards. And for me, the MX Platinum is just for those added benefits that I kind of just wrote down. Something to know about the gold status with Hilton, they only denied me one time when I was booking through a third party vendor. I know that typically they're not supposed to honor the room upgrade. Like you have to book through the Hilton website itself, but let's say I book through Expedia most of the time or a different portal that's not Hilton. Once I get there, I am able to input my honors number uh, for gold status, and they'll usually give me the room upgrade as well as like complimentary waters. I don't wanna bank on that and definitely share this is the way they do things, but just from my personal experience, they only denied me once and that was in Hawaii, and that was because it was fully packed and they didn't even honor uh, the late checkout because it was so busy. So I definitely wanted to give a heads up on that. So if you do want status and kind of worried about, hey, I only have to book through Hilton, that's not been the case for me and I still want to definitely just get the cheapest rate um, when I'm booking hotels and then if they do honor it, great. If not, I still think the value of getting the lower price is worth it than just paying the extra to get the room upgrade, in my opinion. Depending on what you're doing. If you're going on a date, maybe it's a little different, but if you're just going by yourself, trying to get a charge to sleep there for a night, I don't think that's that big a deal. But yeah, essentially that was a really quick pros list. I, I really like the card. I want to also mention the cons that I thought was interesting. Um, so the one that I thought was the biggest con was the, the travel portal. Trying to navigating the travel portal and using the find hotels and resort credit. That was interesting and kind of confusing how to navigate all of that. Personal travel story of mine, of one of the cons, I was staying in Sofitel in Chicago this year, starting December 29th and my checkout date was January 1st, so New Year's we were leaving. What I realized was that $200 credit that you get for booking through the fine hotels portal, it was gonna be the new calendar year is when your checkout date was. So it got applied to the 2024 statement versus the 2023, so I wasn't able to use it again for this year. Honest mistake, had no idea. Something to keep in mind if you're gonna book something for New Year's using the fine resorts and getting the, the credits. $100 was nice, I believe it was $100, if I'm not mistaken. And we used that for, for breakfast in the morning, I believe twice. One day we got a breakfast, a full breakfast, and the second day we just got smoothies uh, the next morning. Hotel was beautiful, um, definitely a more of a luxury service, which is great, but I think navigating that was a little bit confusing for me personally because there was one section that had certain criteria and there's another section that had another's uh, criteria. So I would just say one of the cons was using the hotel portal, and then another con is just all the things that you might have to read the fine print for to learn if you're gonna be getting the benefits correctly. Another con, of course, is the annual fee, the expensive annual fee for $6.95. It just depends if you're gonna cover it each year. You might cover it for the first year because all those one, one-offs like the TSA pre-check, I'm not with Equinox anymore, so I won't be using that. Yeah, essentially, it's just those, Equinox and the TSA pre. So those are already checked off because I already used it. Um, and then you really calculate it after the first year. 
And really the only, the last thing that I had was an issue was uh, being overseas. Being overseas, a lot of places just don't accept Amex. And it was important to have a Visa or MasterCard with zero foreign transaction rates in my wallet when I was traveling abroad too. So most of the time, oh, partially I had Apple credit card, um, which is zero transaction rates, and it was MasterCard. And then I had the Chase Sapphire for Visa. And I would just kind of switch in between those three and, um, that was that. But yeah, most of the times I wasn't even using my American Express abroad. So I didn't ever use it in the US besides for flights and hotels. And I barely used it abroad because a lot of places didn't even accept it. And the most recent place I went to was Italy. Um, and they just didn't take a lot of places didn't take Amex. But I had that experience too when I was traveling around Europe. And that's kind of it. I just kind of wanted to give you my experience with using the Amex Platinum card the pros, things that I didn't really think about when I first got it, the cons, but really I think it's a great card if you can cover the cost yearly. And let's say I don't cover one year, maybe I'll just decide to close it and it was good having the experience and trying everything, um, but it just might not be worth it. Like I don't go to the lounges that often. Is the bundles and memberships gonna be worth it for me in the long term? I just don't know, but at least the first year, for sure worth it. After this, we'll see how they go. But anyways, I know it's been a hiatus and I'm glad uh, to be filming again um, into this new office. This new office, I, I'm just really appreciative that I'm able to do this again um, because I know it's been, a, it's been a long time. Anyways, I will drop the card below. This isn't a sponsored ad. I just wanted to uh, put something out there that I thought was very valuable and a lot of friends asked me the benefits of this card and. Those, these are my takeaways. So of course, it's gonna matter more for people and peers that you have similar spending habits with and why you find something more beneficial than the others. So kind of giving this to people in my friend group, just to let them know, like, I think it's worth it. It's up to you if you wanna do it or not, but it, it, it does cover, uh, it does check out. And of course, use the calculator um, by S. Sebi. I think that's his handle. And so thank you for that. Thank you for that resource. And of course, yeah, please like and subscribe again. And I will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.